You are listening to the Pleasant Spirit Podcast with your host, licensed massage therapist, Kyle Pleasant. Here, we will be discussing topics on health and wellness, as well as self-improvement and his experiences as a legally blind massage therapist. And now, here's your host, Kyle. to the Pleasant Spirit Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Pleasant. So today, I wanted to kind of talk about um, how I actually got into massage. I usually have clients that like to chit-chat during sessions, and one of the questions I often get are, what made you get into massage? And um, I wrote a podcast, uh, a podcast, um, a blog post about this a couple of years ago and I thought well maybe I should put it into podcast form so if you'll bear with me I'll give you a little history lesson on how I uh, how I actually got into massage and talk about a little bit about what it's like to be legally blind during massage as well um, so uh, I originally grew up in Texas and um, I went to college in Texas and after I graduated uh, I moved to a town called Tyler, and there I worked at a paper manufacturing company doing IT work, and mostly did shipping and receiving, and you know, changing people's emails, and fixing their printers, and things like that. And there in Tyler, at the factory, it was a uh, it was an organization that hired people with disabilities, specifically with blindness and it was a lighthouse for the blind and so it was a really good introduction for me to kind of work with other visually visually impaired and blind people and also kind of hone in my computer skills that I got from college and stuff and it was a good job and I made a lot of friends and and uh but I really just kind of felt like it was a lot of corporate stuff that went on and, and I didn't really feel like I was maximizing my altruistic potential as it were or whatever i mean you know people need their emails uh set up and printers to work but you know i really felt like i could do something uh on a larger scale help more people do you know just contribute something more to society so uh, after eight years of doing that in 2005 i went I I quit my job and kind of just kind of sold everything and and, and just kind of started over basically from from that point on. And I, uh, you know, in that in that particular year, I did like uh, hiking. That's when I hiked the Appalachian Trail and I uh, did the backpack across Europe kind of stuff. You know, the kind of stuff that you normally do whenever you get out of college. I did out of, you know, eight years later. And after that, then I decided to uh, go into massage school and uh, I did that and I graduated and that was in Texas and now when I went to school in Texas and then I started working after that I really it was a little difficult for me because um, Texas is a little bit more conservative and uh, and it's a little harder for people to adopt massage as kind of a more medical health for health benefits you know most people uh at least there anyway from my perception uh, most people's idea of massage is something that you do for a treat or you special you know like a special spa day kind of thing and it was mostly just to relax and that not didn't have the um hold the belief that massage uh, you could use for health reasons, health benefit have has health benefits to it. And that's another episode that I would go into. But um, and I was also a uh, male therapist, and so there was a lot of um, bi- a bias there because having a male therapist um, was a little harder to you know get clients there. You know because again the perceive the perception there is that you know if uh, a male touches you, you know it's a little bit more 
sexualized or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, that was my perception. And, and that conservative nature just kind of soured it for me for the for the moment. So um, I went back and did some additional training in uh, IT work because I figured, well, I had eight years of IT work. So uh, doing computer stuff, let's go back and do some additional training. So I did, went back and did that uh, in, in Arkansas. I went moved to Arkansas and took a took a computer training course there and that's where i met uh my my wife kelsey and after my training was over we she and i both decided to move to portland and i basically moved to portland because since both of us are visually impaired um portland had a really good transportation system up here i really am blessed to live in an environment where i don't need to drive or anything like that since i don't have neither one of us can drive it was a great environment for us to be able to get around and do the things that we needed to do plus it wasn't 100 degrees all summer long uh in like it is in in texas so it was the weather was temperate the cost of living was good and you had a lot of more open-minded people that lived here and uh and we could get around so that's why we chose portland which was another question that people ask um, we've been here for about 13 years now, so we've been really blessed um, by being in this environment. Anyway, whenever we first moved here, it was during the recession, and uh, I tried to find, uh, you know, IT work. You have in, Intel is up here, one of the main Intel campuses are up here, so I tried to get work there and, and various other jobs that, you know, just didn't really pan out into uh, any kind of part-time work is always uh, temp work so after a few years of that and trying to you know get in break break my way into the IT field I thought you know what why not go back and try massage again because it uh, you know it worked out I enjoyed it whenever I took some classes in Texas and I thought well since I live in a more con- more liberal environment maybe it would be uh maybe uh, I'd be a little bit more successful. So I did that. And sure enough, you know, I went through the uh, the training here in, in Oregon because it required uh, more uh, hours of training to get your license. And that was just, it was just great. Everything seemed to flow. And I, I got in really quick. And then after I graduated, I got hired on at a chiropractor office. So it really worked out quite well and that was kind of my introduction into massage here in Oregon and I've been you know blessed ever since and it wasn't until a few years ago when we moved here to Gresham that I went ahead and uh, started my own practice because the uh, office space or the uh, the uh, space in the garage was able to be converted into a massage studio so I was uh, blessed to have that happen too and so that was kind of the short story of how i got into massage because um when i was going through school uh, going getting my training you know a lot of people would say oh you're really intuitive and um oh and you understand you know you you got you found the right spot and i've said on my on my website and and i i receive this from a lot of clients is that um whenever you're um whenever you lose one sense like your vision or your hearing or something like that they they say that you um other your other skills start to uh, heighten and for me definitely my sense of smell has heightened because of my visual impairment but also my sense of touch has also been uh, affected by that and i think that is what sets me apart from a lot of different massage therapists is because I, I'm a little bit more intuitive um, to my clients, and it has made me a more effective uh, therapist because of it. And uh, and I often get clients that say, "Oh, hey, I didn't know that hurt," or "How did you find that?" No, most people don't don't know about that, or they'll say, "Oh, you know that that was an injury that I had a while back, and you you seem to hit upon it really well." So that that has uh, been one of my uh, top performers there in uh, doing massage with working with other people and doing it as a visually impaired person um, 
I don't use a lot of paperwork, and that's why I don't do insurance. Is because I um, have trouble, you know, sitting in front of the computer for a long period of time. This po- this podcast and some simple notes are pretty much the extent of my computer use these days. And I feel like if I was still in IT work, I would have a lot of, you know, eye strain and headaches from from that point on. And um, for for me, it's never it hasn't. Effect, I don't really you need to use my eyes to be able to uh, you know see the muscle tissue or anything like that. So I t- typically you know turn the lights down low and, and and work there mostly in the dark. So it's not really uh, necessary to see anything. So it's kind of been very uh, very very helpful for me. So other than just some simple a simple card, I don't do an intake form. And uh, or any, you know, any big notes or anything like that, and uh, and it's worked out pretty well for me since I'm working in my own own space. I can pretty much set my own hours and and work work the way that I want to, and I've got the room set up the way that I want to, and so it's been really effective for me. Well, and that's pretty much the the short of it uh, right there. So I hope that um, that was of some interest to somebody out there. And, of course, if you have any questions about my visual impairment, because I often get questions about how well can you see, which is a hard question to, uh, to answer sometimes. But pretty much I can see your face from across the room. But if you stuck your tongue out at me, <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't see that. You know, or if you were waving to me across the street, you know, and I don't wave back. Don't be offended if if you know me, you know, and I don't wave back to you or I don't notice you at, at the uh, shopping, at the grocery store. You know, if I don't recognize you at the grocery store, don't take it personally. It's just because I can't really uh, recognize your face from a distance. And so unless you talk to me, come up to me and say, hey, Kyle, I'm Karen. Hey, Kyle, I'm Michelle or, or whatever, then I won't probably won't know who you are so if you see me in the store you'll have to tell me who you are and and let me know anyway so uh if you have any other questions about my visual impairment and how i managed to go to school or how i uh, ended up uh how i function on a daily basis and along with my wife because she's also visually impaired um give me a, a shout out there at um podcast at pleasant spirit dot com or you, again you can use the little voicemail voice message feature that they have on these platforms and be sure to like and share this video uh this uh podcast i've been watching a lot of youtube videos here <laughs> lately um anyway uh until next time have a pleasant day Thank you for listening to the Pleasant Spirit Podcast. We hope you found today's show informative. Please take a moment to write a review. And if you want to reach out or have show ideas, you can email at podcast at pleasantspirit.com. You can also visit his website at pleasantspirit.com. If you are in the Portland, Oregon area, you can schedule a massage or one of his coaching services at pleasanttouchmassage.com. See you next time and always be well.